Hallelujah. One mind, one accord. Yes, yes. Amen. If any, if any two or three agree upon anything, it shall be done. <laughs> Hallelujah. And that agreement is in the Lord. Praise His holy name. Hallelujah. This kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High. It is an everlasting one. I speak of life, for ye shall never die. This covenant I've made shall stand, death disannulled by my own hand. Mercy, I shall pass over these I've tried. This remnant seed that I preserve is now being seen upon the earth, and my glory rests on the saints of the Most High. Yes, this kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High. It is an everlasting one. I speak of life, for ye shall never die. This covenant I've made shall stand. Death disannulled by my own hand. And with mercy I shall pass over these I've tried. This remnant seed that I preserve is now being seen upon the earth, and my glory rests on the saints of the Most High. Don't you praise them? Hallelujah! This kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High. It is an ever I speak of life, for ye shall never die. This covenant I've made shall stand, death disannulled by my own hand. And with mercy I will pass over these I've tried. Hallelujah! This remnant seed that I preserve is now being seen upon and my glory rests on the saints of the Most High. One more time. Oh, this kingdom and dominion has been given to the saints of the Most High. It is an everlasting one. I speak of life, for ye shall never die. This covenant I've made shall stand, death disannulled by my own hand. And with mercy I shall pass over these I've tried. <laughs> Glory, this remnant seed that I preserve is now being seen upon the earth. And my glory rests on the saints of the Most High. Hallelujah, 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 Lord. Thank you for your answer, Lord. Thank you for your healing, Lord. Praise you for your restoration, almighty God. How for the power of your resurrection. Oh, God, you are able to lift your people up, Lord, to renew their strength, Almighty oh, God. Oh, to confirm their feeble knees, to lift up their weak hands, O oh, Lord, as they worship their God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. 
That is a powerful song we just sang. Powerful. His kingdom and his dominion, he has given it to a people. As he is, so are we in this world. As he is, so it is that we, being in him, he in us, and we're in him, hallelujah, even as he is, so are we in this world. Now that's powerful. That's enough to break up our fallow ground and to release the river of life in every one of us. It's not enough for us to be doing well. We want the whole body to be doing well. We are the light bearers of Christ. We are the voice of the Lord in the earth. We are the people of his name. Hallelujah which means more than just Jesus. It means nature, likeness, image, hallelujah. All of his essence is in us, hallelujah. And it is moving through us. So when God speaks, the devils tremble, all heaven is on tiptoe, and their ear is leaned unto the voice of the Lord and the word of the Lord that is being ushered forth, hallelujah. And how many knows that the word of the Lord is going into all of the earth? Glory to God. The word of the Lord, when it speaks, it doesn't fall on deaf ears. And it doesn't stay within the normal boundaries of the vibration of the, uh, of the sound itself. The voice of the Lord is spirit and it's truth. And it goes into all the universe. Hallelujah. And it keeps reverberating until that which the word of the Lord says to be done is done. Hallelujah. It doesn't just, it's not just a one-time thing. It circles and invades and goes into the very nook and crannies until it searches out all of the darkness, all of the pain, all of the corruption, all of the death. Hallelujah. It doesn't leave one grain of it left. Hallelujah. It changes everything. Can you say amen? amen. And that's why we're here. That's why we're willing to be the voice of the Lord God Almighty, the voice of His resurrection. This kingdom and dominion shall be given to the saints of the Most High. What's the next one on that? Uh, this covenant I've made. Is that the next line? Anyway, I want to go to that line. This covenant that I have made it will stand. Now you know we've entered into a covenant. That we are in the covenant that supersedes the old covenant of the law. This covenant is the agreement of heaven and earth, God and man, hallelujah. And nothing can break that covenant. Nothing, hallelujah, can separate you from the agreement that God has made with us, that he will watch over us, he will pass through us, hallelujah, he will invade us with his glory, and he will give us life and not death, glory to God. Your agreement with hell cannot stand, your covenant with death has been disannulled. <laughs> Glory to God. Do you know how to operate that thing, Corey? Uh, look up the song. This covenant I've made shall stand with death this note by my own hand. No, uh, that's the same song, but she wrote them. For your covenant with death. I hope that's right. I'll need the words so I don't remember all the words. 
For your covenant with death shall be disannulled and will not stand. When the overflowing scourge shall pass, the Father gently holds us in his hands. And as the veil is rent, we shall see the new creation man. And like that precious cornerstone, a sure foundation evermore will stand for your covenant with death shall be disannulled and will not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass a father gently holds us in his hands and as the veil shall see the new creation man and like that precious cornerstone a sure foundation evermore will stand Do you hear the word of the lord your covenant with death shall be disannulled and will not stand when the overflowing scourge shall pass our Father gently holds us in His hands. And as the veil is rent, we shall see the new creation man. And like that precious cornerstone, a sure foundation evermore will stand. Oh, for your covenant with death, When the overflowing scourge shall pass, a father gently holds us in his hands. And as the veil is rent, we shall see the new creation man. And like that precious cornerstone, a sure foundation evermore will stand. Let's give the Lord a hand this morning. <laughs> I tell you, these are words of life. Lord. Hallelujah. Yes. And that's what we're standing on for all of those that are suffering today. All of those that have been put in the furnace. Hallelujah. The flames are getting hot. Things are happening to certain ones. They're, they're living sacrifices unto God. We have not yet resisted under the shedding of blood is what the scripture says but we are living sacrifices some in our midst are going to have to go through some things and like the gate uh, like the man at the gate called beautiful why lord is this man in this condition and who sinned who disobeyed god that he's in, in such a shape and and, and the and the apostles uh, and and the apostles said uh, jesus said uh, this man isn't in this shape uh, in, uh, in that he sinned or anyone else sinned. He's in this condition to glorify his God, to bring glory to God. How's that going to glorify God? Well, the condition itself has no glory in it, but it's what God does in it. Hallelujah. It's what the fires accomplish that we give God the glory. Hallelujah. Now, this is the togetherness that we're speaking of this morning. One for all, all for one. Hallelujah. Three musketeers. They had the revelation. Whatever happens in you, happens in me. It's impossible not to. If you rejoice, I'm rejoicing. Amen. It's contagious. It, it, it's a mirror, and it keeps mirroring the glory of the Lord throughout the body. If there's a victory somewhere, that victory makes its way to me. Hallelujah. And I become the recipient of that glory, of that victory. Now that's why Jesus was the first of many 
to be raised into glory. That's why we put all of our faith and trust in that concept. Because God being no respecter of persons, if he raised one man from the dead, he'll raise every man from that dead. And that wasn't just being raised from the grave. Again, we have to go to the definite article in the Greek. He rose from the death. The death. That isn't the grave only. The death is the death that the scripture says that he has put under his feet. But now it remains for the body of Christ to put it under their feet. Well, how do we do that? By identifying with Jesus. If God did it for him, he is the author and the finisher of our faith. If God honored that one son, he will honor all the sons. Can you say amen? Why do we know that we will no longer die? I know we say we die. That's only out of our uh, common language because everybody else says it. But the fact of the matter is that as far as the death goes, Jesus has conquered it. Glory to God. Before Jesus, people went, laid their bodies down in death and their soul remained in Sheol which is the grave. And there was no resurrection for them. But when Jesus came, he resurrected them and brought them into the life of, 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 of his Father. And he projected that unto all humanity after him. Hallelujah. So that through one man, death has been disannulled forever. Through all the ages and the generations he has bought our life hallelujah and rescued us from death glory to God so while we're going through this life we are now needing to follow him after his resurrection where did he go after his resurrection back unto his father and where is he at in the father he is in the throne of his Father at his right hand. That's where we're headed. Because that's our calling, that's our purpose, is to follow him beyond the resurrection into the life of the resurrection and then to become instruments of his kingdom. Hallelujah. I might speak a little bit about that this morning and then I want to hear from Zach afterwards or anybody else I feel this so strong this morning I feel uh, uh, now uh, another uh, couple that get our uh, weekly DVDs and that have seen you your face they know your names <laughs> and I just got a, a, a letter they, they write to us uh, and send an offering and they're Jose and Marion DeYoung and I believe they're in Oregon and uh, they have a little house meeting as God directs uh, but they pay attention to everything in this service that happens and I remember this last letter she had said give the assembly all of our love we are with you in the spirit you're our family. <laughs> they, they look for that DVD to come to them. And she said, and you know, how is Rob doing? We know that Rob's going to get in that pulpit as God directs him. <laughs> they know, Rob, they know that God is going to bring you forth. Hallelujah. And everybody else. Isn't that beautiful? I don't care how many show up here. I told you, we never minister to a, nothing but a packed house. <laughs> Hallelujah. Buildings couldn't contain 
who we're ministering to right now. Oh, God, hallelujah. 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 Even so, Lord, even so, minister out of the throne of your authority, oh God. He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood, I shall raise up I shall raise up He who eats my flesh and drinks my blood I shall raise up In the last day For my glorious body is eternal life And I shall raise up I shall raise up He who dwells in me There's found no death No strife Are you hearing me today? Hallelujah For I shall raise up In the last day Come on, sing it He who eats my flesh And drinks my blood I shall raise up He's going to raise you up I shall raise up. Yes, he who eats my flesh and drinks my blood. Drink of his life this morning. I shall raise up. Hallelujah, in the last day. Touch Charlotte, Lord. Touch Charlotte, hallelujah. For my glorious body is eternal life. Come on, raise up, body of the Lord. Hallelujah, and I shall raise up. Let them raise up in you, hallelujah, glory. I shall raise up. He who dwells in me, there's found no death, no strife. And I shall raise up in the last day and I shall raise up in the last day Send it forth, Lord. 
send it forth into all the cells of your body. In each member in particular, Lord, send forth that life. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'd like to minister uh, on some of what the songs have been proclaiming this morning. And uh, Sitco in Washington, uh, I don't know if it's Pennsylvania or West Virginia, what they call that certain area, but I think it's Pennsylvania, Washington, Pennsylvania. He was from the old uh, Latter Rain movement. It was one of the big churches of Latter Rain up in the north. And uh, he told me one time, he said, Brother Bob, we have great fellowship together. And I said, well, I believe that, Michael. And he says, you know why? Because we're a couple of fellas in the same ship. <laughs> and we have great fellowship this morning because we're all in the same ship. We're all in this together. We have, we, uh, no matter where we came from, no matter where we started out at, the fact of the matter is, is that when right now, we're all together in this, and there's no going back. There's no leaving this place and trying to find a comfort zone where at one time we felt so wonderful about everything. But you know, I still feel wonderful about everything. It's just that everything's changing around me and in me. It's just that there's a great earthquake going on, uh, fires are raging, uh, elements are burning up. Heavens are rolling up like a scroll. The earth is in tumult. But you know what? It's a beautiful day of the Lord. Because all of that means that there comes a new heaven and a new earth. A new you and a new me in the, in the midst of all of this. So we already know that. God has shown that to us. So these little things that are so light and uh, insignificant in the long in the in the term of the long run in God, they don't slow us down or they don't cause us any uh, consternation because we know the Lord's in control of it all. Now we're in the midst of a great moment in God. Uh, I'm going to need uh, uh, Corey for you to get up some scriptures for me if he doesn't know how to do that, Zach. Maybe you can help them. But I need to uh, get uh, 1 Corinthians, the 15th chapter. And, uh, and I'll have to look and see where I want to go to. Go around verse 50. But there's, there's uh, certain things that separates us from all the other uh, Christians and belief systems out here. We see things a lot different than what the, uh, the nominal church does. Uh, although we see the foundation, uh, which never changes. The foundation is Jesus, and he never changes. It's all on him. It's all through him, in him, and on him. And so we keep the foundation. But we start to separate from the church realm the institutionalized church realm, when it starts talking about things such as the coming of the Lord or the judgments of God, uh, because that starts to allow their soulish, fleshly mind to get involved to the point where they start making God into a man, thinking like a man, acting like a man would, with revenge, with a, an escape theory, uh, with uh, this, uh, and that's what the rapture is, literally, is that the church needs to get out of this mess. 
this world. And they're hanging on to one day get out of it, to escape it uh, before it gets them. And that's why the churches are a lot like fortresses. You have to come through the gate and you have to be questioned before you even get through the gate. You have, they have to decide what you believe in. And if that lines up with what they believe in, well, that's all out of fear and out of torment. The devil's raging like a lion everywhere. He's getting inside the pastor. The, 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 uh, the organ player is running off with the song leader. The pastor's skimming funds off the accounts. Uh, uh, the, the treasurer is taking vacations to Hawaii. <laughs> and they're doing all of this stuff because the devil made them do it. But the fact of the matter is, is that they have God in this image of a man. And they're, they're not yet really enlightened and converted and being able to have been given a personal experience with the life that Christ is. Hallelujah. But where we differ from that is, is that we do believe that there is an event that God is going to change the world by. Amen. You know, we're not going to change the world by just these meetings here in this meeting, in this, in this church. Nobody knows we're here. <laughs> we're hiding out. We're like David in his outlaw years. <laughs> Saul trying to find us, but he can't find us. We're out here on Mount, of all the, word, of all the names of the street, Mount Sinai Road, <laughs> converting it into Mount Zion. <laughs> But we're here because uh, God has us being prepared for a special purpose that he's not doing in the other uh, orders. And God bless them all. God's with them and God's moving as much as he can, as much as he, they'll let him. He's moving in their midst. Oh, love of God. Even though they don't know too much about him, even though they, uh, they, they misrepresent him, uh, he still loves them. He still moves for them when they'll let them. But God has brought us out like Moses. He's brought us aside from the path to see something. And he saw a burning bush that was on fire but not consumed. And out of that bush came the voice of God unto him and gave him a commission. Well, we have had the same sort of an experience. We have been drawn aside from the religious path to see Jesus face to face. And if he's anything like what John describes in uh, the book of, uh, of Revelation, uh, then he is on fire. He is a, a mighty man, a, mi a mighty uh, visage that he represents to us. I know I, I, I was never the same after I came into contact with him. But the church kind of makes it to where we're going to have an event where God brings us off the planet and then lets all of this uh, things go on in it and then Jesus comes back and uh, uh, sets everything right and then uh, everybody gets sent to an eternal damnation that has not believed upon Jesus Christ while in this life. And it's kind of sad to think about that because think of who they're trying to believe on Jesus by is that same religious system that misrepresents them. Which Zach and I was talking about this morning, you have to be a little bit insane to believe what they teach you. I mean, you have to space out. You have to disconnect from everything that is, sounds right even. Sounds even logical at, at any point. What they teach, you have to sort of like say, well, I have no other choice. This church sounds ridiculous, but I've got to believe in it because they say if I don't, I'm going to go to hell. But when you get out of that fear and you look back at what the church has been teaching, you realize how much of a brainwashing it is for people to believe in that and stay in it. But it's through fear that they stay. We've come out. Well, why has God brought us out? Because he does want to perform something in us. Not just us, everyone that is of this 
what the scripture terms first fruit. A portion of the whole. A little bit that God has brought out unto himself. Separating it out of the rest of the field, he brings this first fruit unto himself. This first people that he brings into the experience of his resurrection. And we need that experience. We need to experience the resurrection of Jesus Christ to the point where we no longer fear death. And by death I mean the grave. Where we no longer fear losing our life, our earthly life. We need to experience it to the point where we're not afraid of what God might do in our life. What God might take away from us. What God might uh, see fit to do in order to bring us to a greater place. We have to come into God in a point where we have perfect love, where fear can abide, and we start seeing the hand of the Lord in everything. That takes faith, but that takes a personal experience. Now that's up to you. It really is. For you to open up your heart unto the Lord to have that kind of resurrection experience. Hallelujah. To where your life ends and his life begins in us. Amen. So in, in the scripture, there are certain scriptures in the, in the Bible that speak unto something like what I'm talking about. And this is one of them. We'll start from here. But I tell you this, brethren, flesh and blood cannot become partakers of eternal salvation and inherit or share in the kingdom of God. Nor does the perishable, that which is decaying, inherit or share in the imperishable, the immortal. Next verse. Take notice. I tell you a mystery, and that word mystery is mysterion in the Greek, and it means a secret or a sacred truth. And that, in the Greek, it implies the kind of truth and secret that you have to go through an initiation for it to be revealed to you. You know how they say about the Masons and how they say about uh, uh, an Indian culture, in a Native American culture, how they have an initiation into manhood that you have to go through. Almost every culture has some kind of an initiation where you have to go through to, to actually be recognized that you have entered into another place in society. You're no longer a child, you're now a man. And you can take your place as a man. Well, that's the same uh, what that word means. We have to go through an initiation for these truths to be revealed to us. One of those initiations is death. We have to experience the dying out to our former life so that we are no longer answerable to that old man, the old nature. It no longer has influence upon us. So he's saying, flesh and blood cannot inherit what I'm talking about. This is a spiritual place. Now, Preston Eby has said it many times, and we have said it, but this is a spiritual kingdom we're talking about. It's not earthly. It's not some kind of a kingdom that will operate like the United States of America <laughs> or any other government. Uh, I love my country and I love the freedom I have in it, but God isn't fashioning his kingdom after the United States of America. His government is in truth and righteousness and justice, and it is able to bring out the best in all of the subjects of that kingdom. It has a king. It doesn't have a Congress or a Senate, and it doesn't arrive to uh, uh, determinations by people electing something or voting for something. It is a total subjection to an abiding 
sovereign king. But here's the difference between any earthly kingdom is that God has done such a work and is going to do such a work in those that are citizens of this kingdom of God that whatever God says, whatever God decides to do, it is already in agreement in the hearts of his citizens. Hallelujah. Because they have become one with him. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. And that's why we're not going to be under a bondage. Subject to, yes. Prisoners of, yes. But with joy. Hallelujah. And with rejoicing are we citizens of a better covenant. Hallelujah. And what God does, we say, yay. And amen to it. There's not in us this, oh God, I have a better idea. If you just let me explain it to you, it's much easier, Lord. But when we see God doing whatever he's doing in our lives, there is only one thing in us that must uh, cry out in that. Yay and amen. So be it, Lord. Because he is the author and the finisher of it. And, and the end of it will be more glorious than the beginning of it. Can you say amen? Let's give him a hand this morning. So I want you all to take notice. I'm talking to you about a secret truth that you have to be initiated in by God in order to understand it. You have to have a personal revelation. You have to have God remove the scales from your eyes and rent the veil from your heart, hallelujah, so that you now start seeing things you have never seen before. On Facebook, I am getting just so, uh, uh, God is just wearing me out to look at Facebook because most of my friends are those that we know through the ministry. But they come from everywhere, you know, out there. They, they hear your name, so they want to be your friend. And some of them are the most awful, uh, you know, have the most awful belief systems you've ever seen in your life. And they just say anything and everything. And, 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 and what that tends to do is makes you wonder, God, are you, are you going to be able to do this? <laughs> because... Uh, this is going on 40-some years for us ministering this message, and I see all this junk on here, and I'm thinking, God, hey, God, <laughs> hello, we need to visit these people because they are just as off as, uh, as anything can be. And then every once in a while, you run across something where you can say, praise God. It's great. But this is where we're at with this. I'm not concerned with numbers. We want only those that God has ordained to hear what we're saying. It's a mystery. It is a inner circle. People say that's elitism. Let them say it's elitism. Might as well say that uh, Peter, James, and John, and Jesus had their own little circle, and they were elite. The fact of the matter is, is that God has always done something in a small group before he does it in the larger mass. He has always done something because he needs willing hearts. He needs a people who are surrendered and a people who have given themselves to him. Can you say amen? Take notice, I tell you a mystery, an event. Everybody say an event. Say it with me, an event. It's not the rapture, but it is an event. Decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. This mystery is revealing an event that has been decreed by the hidden purpose. You won't find it in the mega churches. You won't find it even amongst those that are starting to speak about reconciliation. Understand this. Reconciliation is, is being ministered now in the mainstream. Kingdom is a popular word. In the mainstream, uh, grace is the word they use for reconciliation because reconciliation has a lot of connotations to it. So they prefer the word grace. And grace churches are springing up all over the world. But it's not ministering 
the secret. It's going back 2,000 years ago and making it all about the cross. But they're not going beyond the cross and coming into the resurrection life of Christ. And they're not taking a people into the throne room because it's all finished to them. Well, listen, the only way to enter into the throne room is to be an overcomer. To him that overcomes will I grant to sit with me in my Father's throne. And for them, there's nothing to overcome. But for us that have left the beaten path, just because the devil is no longer has any legal right to have his own way, he is still the instrument of the Lord. And he is still going to be allowed to test, prove, qualify a people. And so although he's not this monster that can come in anytime he wants and ravage the people of God, there is still an exercise room that he is that God is going to allow us to go into the exercise room to build up our strength, to build up our faith in order for us to do the things that God wants us to do. I'm saying do those things because a lot of people settle for just becoming something. Well, if you become something, guess what? The only reason why you're becoming that is to do something with it. Can you say amen? We're not always just going to have a church service. There's a doing in the midst of all of this. We're here to be transformed, to be transfigured, to be enlightened, to be lifted up, to have our eyes opened up, to have God deal with us on the things that need to be dealt. But when all of that is through, that is where the event takes place. But anyway, this event is decreed by the hidden purpose or counsel of God. We shall not all fall asleep in death. What did they say about uh, Lazarus? Lord, Lazarus is dead. And Jesus said, no, he just sleeps. And they kept it up. Lazarus is dead. Lord, he stinketh by now. He is dead, dead, dead. <laughs> you have waited too long. To get over there, he's dead. And Jesus just, uh, you, you know, why, why he wept, uh, you can understand why. Because he understood the fact that death, the grave, is just a transition. It is just where people become unaware. And that's all sleeping is about. It's not that they've got these dormitories set up in heaven where everybody's in, in their bed. <laughs> waiting for some resurrection day. <laughs> it's that they are no longer aware of this life as they once were. So their, their awareness is now being refocused upon Jesus and the, and the city of God. You know, in, in, in the book of Revelation, it talks about the new Jerusalem. And it talks about, describes the city. And it talks about the throne with, with, with Jesus on, on the throne. It talks about him being the light of the city. It talks about the river flowing from the throne through the city with the tree of life in the midst of it. It talks about all of that, the walls. And it talks about gates. It has 12 gates. And these gates are open continually and the nations come to that city now Jesus talked about an outer darkness where there will be weeping and gnashing of teeth not fire he said outer darkness 
And I believe that this is showing us the image of the light of God being in the city and the light expanding beyond the city, but God allowing there to be a diminishing of that light for all those that are outside of the city that have to go through an initiation to enter into the city, there is a darkness. And that is where torment is. Not a, a physical torment like we would think of pain. A spiritual torment. What have I done? Why didn't I do this? Oh, regrets. All of this. But the good news is the gates are open. And the gates never shut. And then as they see the light, they walk toward the light, out of the darkness, and that progression brings every man, woman, and child into the presence of the Lord. Now, I don't agree with people that just cut things out and throw it away concerning God. He is everything the Scripture says He is. And His judgments are true. Because judgments aren't to just torment us. Judgments are to heal us, restore us, give us a, another place in God. So I run after the judgments of God in my life, believe it or not. I welcome the judgments. Because again, I have been initiated. I have seen and felt the heart of God. I know the love that God has. I know that he will never, ever, ever forsake me or leave me or give up on me. That his plan includes the fact, and, and I believe that, that, that Mike mentioned that so beautifully uh, last week when he ministered, which was an astounding message, uh, uh, where he said, you know, even if I made mistakes, God is going to make those mistakes work for me, not against me. Even if I have taken the canvas of my life and scribbled on it, God is going to take that scribbling, hallelujah, and turn it into a masterpiece, glory to God. And I'm telling you, we can't do anything to make God leave us or forsake us or give up on us. But we are going to have to learn righteousness. We are going to have to become obedient. We are going to have to allow the judgments of God to start giving us the mind of Christ, the heart of God, hallelujah, so that we're no longer doing our thing, we start doing God things, hallelujah. Can you say amen? I want the judgments of God. I want God to take this lump of clay and to fashion it and form it and make it into that which brings glory to Him. I know I'm a vessel of dishonor, but God is able to take the dishonor and make it honor unto the name of the Lord. And He's able to do that for all of you. Hallelujah. We will not fear our God. Hallelujah. We will not fear our Father and think that we are going to be eternally lost. Oh God. But for all of our loved ones that have crossed over, for those that don't know the Lord, yes, they may be in a darkness and in un uh, an unawareness, not able to discern anything when they first go over. But that is where it begins. It carries on. Hallelujah. The gates are open continually. Hallelujah. Well, why have gates if only the people that are saved are in the city? Because there is a progression. Even after death, there is a progressive parade of lost souls coming into the presence of Christ. Hallelujah. That's what separates us from the church system is that we see the grace of God even beyond the grave. Hallelujah. It's an event though that God is gearing toward in this dimension. Beyond the grave, that's God's business. Can everybody say amen? That's not my business, that's God's business. But on this side of the river, while we're yet present in body we need to understand 
that we may that we have in store for us a change. We shall not all fall asleep in death, but we shall all be changed, transformed. That's not rapture. That's on terra firma, head in the heavens, feet on the ground, God transforming a people. Next verse. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, in a, the Greek says, the word it uses for a moment, in an atomos, which is where we get our word for Adam. In the atoms, in fact, it has nothing to do with time. It has to do with the fact that God is going to begin to transform his people in the most base elemental part of us down into the very core of who we are this isn't just body either it's it's bringing together spirit soul and body it's a change rob that has already begun we wouldn't be here speaking what we're speaking unless it has already begun in us to come this far but we're nowhere yet i mean we're we're so shallow yet it's it's pitiful but God has brought us along in the right timing. But now get ready to see things start to accelerate because the momentum is building because of mass. Because God is getting more and more people together in one mind, in one accord. What a work God has done on us, folks. To cause us to, sh to, to shrug off of us the religious garments that meant so much at one time. All of these religious pride and ego in what we were, how, what, what, what church we belonged to, how great of a building we had, how many uh, members we had. Uh, uh, oh, and, and you see this in, in the charismatic churches an awful lot. The pastor comes out dripping with gold upon them, uh, robes. With, with, uh, uh, I know TBN at one time, I don't know if they still do or not, but it looked like Babylon. <laughs> Literally, it looked like Babylon. Gold thrones, gold everything. All of this, all of this imagery that they wanted to have it in the TV, that this was power and might and glory. Whereas all it is is just camouflage. The power, glory, and honor isn't in buildings or uh, how well we look, how well we feel. I, I, I told you before, I'll never forget in Gallup, New Mexico, when I was so sick, ministering, I had uh, dysentery, which is pretty common there for people that don't live there. And I was uh, so weak and weary in my body uh, from the sickness and having to minister every night. And I remember when I was walking down this aisle and I thought I was going to pass out and uh, everything was swimming around. And the Spirit of the Lord told me, that he said, grab that woman's hand. And when I opened up my eyes to look to see the woman, she must have been 120 years old. She was skin and bones. And she looked like she was dead in the seat. I couldn't see anything moving. And her eyes were glazed over and she was just sitting. And I said to myself, oh, God, if I, if I grabbed her arm, it'll come off. She's so weak and, weak and frail. And the Spirit of the Lord said, grab it. And I grabbed her hand. And when I did, a jolt of lightning struck right up through my hand into my arm and right into my body. And I was instantly healed. And that woman never batted an eye. <laughs> I couldn't believe that that power came out of that body. See, it's not what we look like. It's not how we feel, folks. Oh, hallelujah. It's what's inside of us. I see such great power in us, Karen. As I look at you when I'm caught up in the Spirit and I look at the people of God, I see power. I see like lightning bolts going off. Hallelujah. The light of the Lord is in us. Glory to God. And the power of God is upon us. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Now we must start to realize that, become conscious of it, and demonstrate that power and glory. In a moment, in your smallest very particle of you, in the twinkling of an eye, that actually means in the Greek, 
with your eye jerking, a jerk of the eye. It's not this stardust in your eye. It's, a, it's when you jerk your eye like looking at something off to the side over here. A side event. Hey, glory to God. A burning bush. Amen. A people who don't seem to be very great and mighty, but oh my, what's happening over there? Something's going on. Hallelujah. Who is that with them? It's the Lord of glory. And what that causes you to do is turn aside. That's what this moment is, this event. It turns the people aside from where they're going to something spectacular. At the sound of the last trumpet call. Trumpet after trumpet after trumpet after trumpet sounds. And they're still sounding. But then there is a final trumpet. And that trumpet is what we hear in our ears. And then something happens. For a trumpet will sound and the dead in Christ, hello, those that have been initiated, who have died in Christ, died to their old world, died to their former life, the dead in Christ will be raised imperishable, free and immune from decay. Woo, hallelujah. And we shall be transformed. Hallelujah. These are sons of God that that is going to happen to. Sons of God. Why that? Why sons of God? Because it's a term that separates us from the children. The children of the kingdom. Sons of God are full bearded, mature sons. They have been raised up in God, and now God has said, Now I'm going to use you to do my will and my purpose. I trust you. I see myself in you. Hallelujah. You're everything I am, and I want to send you forth now. Hallelujah. Then the events start to unfold where kings start to come to a rising, a rising up in the earth of a company of people who are going to stand in the earth and there's going to be such a glory and an anointing and a power upon them that they are going to start to set things right in all of the earth and in all of heaven. Heaven and earth will be judged by them. According to scriptures. Angels themselves will be judged by these that have come into the event through an initiation by giving themselves unto the process that God requires those that don't want to go through this process, I'm not worried about it. I am totally focused on this one thing. I'm not worried about how the Baptist Church is doing. I'm not worried about how uh, Pentecost is doing. I'm not worried about New Age or what they're doing or how many of these other things going on. I'm not worried about ISIS. I'm not worried about Iran. I'm not worried about Israel. I'm not worried about any of that. None of that involves me. That's all distractions for the, uh, for the soulish mind to get involved in, to get political about. Well, politics have no place in this. This is all about the kingdom of God. And the kingdom of God is peace, joy, and righteousness in the Holy Ghost. That's what the kingdom is. That's what we are about, bringing peace and joy and love into every situation. Can you see yourself as that? the very light bearer for that, wherever you go, wherever you're found, that that peace and joy and righteousness emanates from you. This is what we want. It may not be happening right now, but God is awakening us to it and alerting us to it. Hallelujah. It's all about the manifestation of the sons of God. And I know people get, they, they have uh, uh, ADD. Is that right? ADD or A A A H A D H hyper hyper real hyper deficiency attention deficit hyperized <laughs> deficiency believe me the church world has it 
they're always wanting to do away with something so that something else can come in. Oh, come on, we got to keep the people going. We got to get better musicians. We got to get better uh, speakers. We got to get bigger churches. We got to get this, damn, 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 damn. They go into all of that frenzy. They're spending enough money on all of this stuff to feed the poor and all the hungry. And they're putting it toward religious stuff. But God has delivered us from that attention deficit. And we are looking unto Jesus steadfastly. And our eyes are not off of him. Our focus is on him. That's what this assembly is about. That's what we're about. Hallelujah. And I'm so happy to be here for that. Are you? Hallelujah. Amen. God bless. Praise the Lord.